as as I was leaving, I got a uh, I got a call for an airplane in Costa Rica, and I'm like, "Fuck it, yeah, I'll do it." You know, I said, "When is it?" He goes, "Next couple of days," and I'm like, "All right." And I said, uh, "So it says Friday, Saturday, and Sunday." He's like, "Yeah." I said, "Cool, I'll take it." And then I get home, and I forgot to ask permission. <laughs> so can't go to Costa Rica. We already had we we already had plans, I guess. Okay. So yeah, this is gonna be some downtime right now. <laughs> okay. yeah. no, no. So you work all night you work all day, work all day, work all night, and then drove overnight. Yep. <laughs> I mean, like, I get it. So, if there, if I can, if I can go home, I'm going home. Uh, no, I, like, I get it. You like, know what I mean? Um, I mean, that, yeah. That trip coming back from Texas, and I picked the truck up from the shop. I got to the shop at like probably noon. And they told me it was done. They didn't finish it till like six o'clock at night. And then I drove from, gosh, where was I? Pretty much Georgia, and like the backwoods of Georgia, all the way yeah. down to Fort Myers, in a low boy tractor trailer, like just straight through. And they're like, I can't believe you you drove home. I was like, dude, I was gonna stay sleep in a freaking parking lot for another night. Like, no. I'm going home. <laughs> if I can make it home, I will. Yeah. It's it's just and well, here comes this okay, here comes a story. So I'll tell you the truth. To this day, I still don't know what happened. To honest to God. Um it was like, I don't know, ninety-eight. And, uh, no, it was 99. It was 99, 1999, dude. Cause I had a, uh, a Chevy S10 flare side. It was <laughs> fat, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I called her my cherry dude. She was gorgeous, bright red, you know? And then here I am, you know, uh, I'm in the military and, uh, I would, I would, uh, come home. You know, I'd come home, you know, and see my girl and do that whole, that whole, you know, usual TV picture. And uh, one time, dude, my buddy needed my truck. And I was like, man, I'm on my way home. He goes, hey, take my Camaro. Now, it was an under, this thing was an undercover Z28. I mean, this thing was killer. And uh, I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. So I grabbed his Camaro. He grabbed my truck for a weekend. Here we go. Dude, I was going 140 something, 42, 43, down I 10, huh. um, down I 75. Fuck it, not, uh, you, you know, oh my goodness. I get down into the, um, an eight and a half hour drive was taking me five and a half hours. I get down into the turnpike, going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And then all of a sudden, I get the boom. And I'm looking at it, I was like, oh shit, I need gas. I need gas. I said, okay, here we go. Ooh. Next one, I passed it. I was going so fast, I passed the next, the next thing. And when I passed it, I said, oh no. And then I kept going. And then the next thing I know, I hit the wall. I saw raindrops hit my windshield. And then I hit the wall. That's that's it. And I said, I'm driving like this. And I, when I hit the wall, I see the airbag deploy in slow motion. And I was like, first thing I said to myself, fuck, that's going to be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> 
first thing I said to myself. Oh, gosh. Dude, I came back and I spun around and hit the ass and bam, 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 hit that middle wall. I was in Jupiter. I was on exit 116 on the, I would never forget it. Oh. Ever. <sighs> ever. 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 I had to call. I, I tried calling home. Nobody was answering. My dad was on the fucking internet. God knows what he was doing. I had, you know, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <clears throat> That's back in the day, too, where if somebody was on the internet, it wasn't going through. Yeah, it <laughs> was not going through, dude. It was not going through. And then, oh, my God, and I kept lifting, you know, uh, left messages, left messages, left messages. And then finally, when, uh, my older brother picked up the phone. He was at a party. Fucker was drunk. And I was like, dude, I got into an accident. Can you please pick me up? He goes, I'm on my way. Like, he sobered up instantly. So him and his wife, they drove up. I didn't know how far or how close we were. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it took him a couple hours like, before he left the party because he was down all the way to Margate. And he lives here in Boca, too, but he was down in Margate. And then uh, he went and picked me up. When I went to go see that car, I said, oh, my gosh. It was done. It was totaled. Yeah, it was. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a complete ball, you know. But yeah, it was gone. Yeah. It was gone. And to this day, everybody says that I fell asleep. Okay. Because I used to fall asleep. I uh -huh. used to fall asleep. I used to fall asleep. I didn't know I had sleep apnea. I had no idea how. I, it never in my mind could I imagine that a 20 year old man, kid, you know, a 20 year old kid would have sleep apnea. But that's what I had. And it took me 20 years to find out. <laughs> oh, so, whatever I'm, I, and that's what I learned. And I, and, you know, it's like oxygen and my mask. And I'll take breaks, you know, I'll just, because I have oxygen in my van. I'll take breaks. I'll just, you know, a beautiful session, I would say, is if, if I can get an hour, a hmm. nice quiet hour for myself, uh, it's a blessing. But on the road, it's almost impossible. So that's what I'll do, like 15-minute breaks. You know what I mean? I really, really, really do. I really do. You have to just sit down and just – not the not that you're going to go eat, not the kind – you know, you know, corporate America has this that like, oh, here's your 15 minute break. You know, that's your lunch time, it's your snack time. No, oh, dude, it, it's supposed to be for our minds. It's supposed to be for us to calm down, to talk to ourselves and say, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" You know, they have us. Oh my goodness! Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting concept where you, like you know you, you take 15 minute breaks and like i don't stop for anything at, like at all i legit so like i i, I drove wrecker for gosh i think i started driving a record when i was like 22 and i think what's up not while i'm driving though mm, i got you no no, no 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 it's when i'm working no, not when okay. i'm driving no yeah. i don't stop for that either when I think about it, I just kind of go. But uh, again, I do drive for a living, so that would that's, be why. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's, that's my downtime. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> that, well, I guess you're right because you can actually listen, and that's where you get all your books and everything. That's that's that's, a, that's, that's how I crush that's fucking world. that's drive time university, motherfucker. <laughs> that's all it is. Like hell it, yeah, no. So, so that's, that's how yeah. I got into like that big thick CD book. That you used yeah. to have when you were a kid, it's full audiobooks because yes. that's yes. what I used to listen yes. to while I drove. Like, that was well, probably one of the more pivotal points in my life when I made that switch because when I had moved from Colorado, well, we're having to do a life story one of these days. When I moved from Colorado um, back in 2013, 
I had just finished, I did like 18 months of individual therapy for anger management and depression. And the opportunity to come to move to Florida to, to start another business. And so I was like, I'm out, be there in a week. And they're like, wait, what? Like, you don't even have to think about it. I was like, nah, like, I'm out. And they're like, all right, well, we're not ready yet. So like, give us like a, a month, maybe 90 days, something like that, you know, to get down there. So came down here, still a complete train wreck, out, out of the bar every night. I'd go to the gym every day, but like I just old habits, um, you know, die hard. You, you, you take yourself with you when you, when you try to change, they're, they're, you're always right there. So somebody had made the suggestion that I get some audio books. And so I went into, what is it? Barnes and Noble here in Fort Myers, you know, bought a couple CDs. And I think the first one I got was as a man thinketh, um, was the first audio book. And then I think the second one was like the richest man in Babylon. Yeah. And so we're going through those. And then I got into some network marketing stuff and they put me onto SoundCloud. And so it's like nonstop, just audio, mm -hmm. audio, audio. And then somebody has suggested Napoleon Hill, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. And I started listening to that. And I had bought the CD, put it in, didn't even make it to the first disc. I was like, yeah, nah, threw it in the back seat, went on to the next one, um, did Outwitting the Devil. And then oh, I got the first, yeah. I'm scared um, of that one, dude. I'm scared. <laughs> I have a story on that one, too. Ooh, that one's scary, dude. <laughs> listen to me. When I started this whole thing, you know how many times I had to listen to that motherfucker? And I don't. I'm I'm literally shivering because I'm falling asleep. So now it's in my sub fucking conscious. You know what I mean? It oh, and then when he starts talking to him, oh, good, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like that that one was probably one of the. But I still listen to. So I have that one on disc and I have it on my phone. And I tell everybody that they they need to get the hard copy too. And it's like that's something that like you need to like chew on that for a long time because it's it's so relevant in today's world. And it was written I think in like 1938 or something like that. A hundred years ago, yeah, yeah. hundred so, years ago. It's just like well, this is crazy. And so you know, just stay on the path. I'm chipping away uh, the slide edge. Um, start with why and just keep on going, going and going and going. And then I got into uh, Norman Vincent Pill and the power of positive thinking and uh, all the less grounds and like my, my phone's full of, and I'm still going back. I bought what about three, NLP? What's that? NLP. NLP. What's that one? Neuro linguistic programming. I have not heard that one. Ooh, we'll talk off camera on that one. Okay. That one's badass. Okay. All right. That I'm one is gonna... literally it's all persuasion. It's it's all how you how you want people to perceive it. That's interesting. Cool. I did the Art of Seduction by uh, Robert Greene, and that one was a uh, was pretty pivotal in understanding the way that persuasion works, like in relationships. Mm -hmm. And it was like never really thought about. It you exerting influence in a situation to be able to like selfishly get what you want, but that's what a lot of people do. And so it was a very interesting uh, tool is how it was given to me. Somebody was like, yeah, this is a tool. I was like, okay. Um, and it, it really is. But like just that whole rant about you know, personal development and audiobooks and stuff like that literally like one of the it's where my life started to change and just because of the mentality of it um, yeah of it, you, you stop listening to the negative programming of, of crappy content that's coming out on the radio and the like my sister said i used to meditate to dmx because like i could go word for word beat for beat <laughs> so, listen I I don't um I don't I don't put music on mm. right so it, and if I if I don't have a book well now I have the buds you know mm. so I would I would I'm, I'm and I'm and I'm driving too you know I'm going to a different location I'm driving all right you know or there was a good period in the beginning that I had to kind of 
cover the buzz because they were always on and I'm underneath an airplane, you know, and I'm working out here, I'm doing an inspection, I'm doing something, you know what I mean? And it was frowned upon because it's fucking a huge safety hazard, huge safety hazard. But I didn't give a fuck, you know? And then one time I, uh, I got written up because of it. And, mm. uh, um, and I was like, all right, you can have a speaker, they said. I'm like, cool. And then I got fucking, start, they started seeing me as a fucking freak because everything was exactly this, you know, it was, it was some type of empowerment book, you know, um, of course. And then everybody's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, and I just, I just didn't want to be that old grumpy fucking mechanic that with their fingers are like that fucking thick. You know, and smoking the fucking menthol, and you're like, ah, oh, you fucking idiots! It's done like this, you know. I didn't want to be that guy, dude. I didn't want to be that guy. I had to find another way. I had to find another way. <laughs> yeah, that was the motivation on my end. It was where I didn't want to be that grumpy old truck driver. Like, mm-hmm. when was the last time you saw like a fit truck driver besides Daniel? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I'll wait. Good. It was like now social media, you see a few of them, but it's they're old, they can't walk, they're grumpy, and it's just like, and they're tied to the truck for the income for the entirety of their life. I just don't want that. And so yeah. that was always like when I went back into it this last time, that he was like, Man, have you ever thought about driving a truck again? I was like, Absolutely not. And he's like, well, how much would it take for you to do it? And I gave him a number that I thought was going to be way higher than he would be willing to pay. And he's like, done. And I was like, dang. All right, should have went higher. But, you know, that was the actual that was the stepping stone. But, like, that's now it's been what? It hasn't even been a year yet. And he's like, have you ever thought about coming into management and working for this company a little bit in a different role? And I was like, well, I told you I didn't want to drive a truck to begin with, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, another stepping stone because I actually want to learn the other side of the construction industry. Of uh, course. Yeah. Because I'm fucking getting it. Because we can buy trucks and drivers 100%. are always wanting to haul. You know, we just got to find, you know, get the lead. That's all we need to know, you know. This, uh, and that was the, the main thing was like, you know, the permitting side of like there's actual companies that are just like waiting for me to take that move. And we have a nonprofit that's set up where we're actually training people in skills when they're coming out of the jail system. So there's like just steps that are being set up. It was like, you know, I always talk about like being massively successful and all this other stuff. But then when like you start to see these little pieces that are like, I don't have the bandwidth for this right now. Okay, yeah. He was like, one week in a month. Like, yeah, no, I can definitely engage in that for one week in a month. All right, cool. I was like, okay, I can learn the side of this business. And then that's going to give me the relationship that I need to be able to like set up these different organizations, provide people with more jobs and help a lot of people make a lot of money and just change the lineage for ever. And, but it's, you know, the willingness to do something I didn't want to do because I damn sure didn't want to do a truck at all. And then get outside the comfort zone and just like, oh, okay, let's get it. Nice. It's been busy. And they're going to start the demo in my kitchen this Friday. Ah, there you go. <laughs> get that. Get that new kitchen. Well, yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing doing my my master bathroom and my kitchen. So, nice. yeah. Uh, and then we get to see how far it really goes. Right. Brother man, how long have we been on? Nothing. You said how long have we been on? Yeah. About 22 minutes. All right. It's going to be a short one today. I, uh, I'd say go to bed. <laughs> I think we've done enough. You cool? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah.
Hey, at least I was here, right? Discipline, <laughs> discipline, motherfucker. Before motivation. Look, you've been putting all that time in the bank. Cause you've been going for an hour every day, anyways. So, we've got plenty of plenty of stuff. Get some rest. All right, man. Good night. Bye.